My name is DJ Mark Love of the Universal Zulu Nation. I used to DJ for a group called The Far Side, West Coast, here in L.A. all day. Uh, what inspired me is the first time I heard DJing on a record was uh, The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on Wheels of Steel. I was curious of what he was doing on the record. I had no idea exactly what he was doing. Then there was this outfit in L.A. called Uncle Jam's Army. And I seen DJ Bobcat and DJ Egyptian Lover um, do the manipulation of the turntables, and that got me very interested. And then K Day, since LA had the un the only 24 hour hip hop radio station, the K Day had K Day had mix masters. They called a mix master, and they do a show every Saturday for three hours from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. That inspired me even more so to go ahead and start being a DJ. I started off as a beatboxer. I started rhyming. I was popping before any of that, pop locking. But DJing became my love. Not really one specific moment. I mean, when I seen Jam Master J get busy, I was already kind of going the direction of DJing. I seen him manipulate Sucker MC, and that was the first time I had ever seen um, Run DMC at all. That was at the L.A. street scene. Um... But honestly, it was the, the K-Day Mix Masters, what I used to hear them do on the radio. That prompted me to like get two tape decks and mix them together and all that stuff. There was one cat who will go nameless right now. He used to work at this uh, television studio, and I always told him I needed a turntable. So he worked at the studio. One day, he came home. He came over to my crib, and he, he came over to my crib, and he had a turntable, a Technique 1200, and said, here, that's yours. I don't know where he got it from. I don't know what the hell, but he gave it to me. And the other uh, turntable I got, I actually got from this guy at this auto sound repair shop that he was selling for like 50 bucks. I told him I was going to give him the money, but I didn't have the money, so he gave me the turntables and said, you'll just pay me later. Thank you for starting the career of DJ Mark Love. I've done everything from weddings, bar mitzvahs, I DJ a couple of wakes. I've done, yes, I heard me wakes. I've done, um, I've done everything. A real DJ to me does everything. They don't just do one thing. So yeah, I love, I love hip hop and I'm a hip hop purist, but I'll play music to make the people happy because I look at it as a, a DJ as also an entertainer. We're also here to entertain the masses, not just to play what we want. So I pretty much have done, I can't really narrow it down, but I pretty much done a lot of stuff. I've done pretty much everything. Pretty much far side were dancers back in the day. And um, they were dancing on different TV shows as a group 242. And they were dancing in different spots. And I was doing security at a club called Paradise 24. And pretty much they knew me from there because they used to enter the dance contests all the time. And after that, I started really getting more into DJing. I went to this club off of Hollywood Boulevard and La Brea. And the name of the club is called, uh, it was called the Spice Club, but the name of the night was called Club Stanky Booty. And I went in there, and I went in there with a crate, and I started cutting and scratching and spinning and DJing, and everybody was like, oh man, oh man, Mark Love is, is killing it. And there were four dudes in the corner dancing with each, with themselves, and little did I know that was the far side when they just got signed. So they needed a DJ, and they were using my boy Smooch as a DJ, and he was like, I don't really want to do that. So they basically asked me, Fat Lip came up to me and asked me if I wanted to DJ for him. I said, sure, why not? And then that just started with me moving in with him at the Farside Manor, staying with him for a year. And I DJed well, in the first, for the first album and the first tours. There was a guy who named Reza who did a lot of raves. And Reza, one thing about Reza... Reza liked the way I DJed a lot. So he did a hip hop show at this place called the Variety Arts Center. And he had Karis One, you know, he had Karis One as a headliner. And I was DJing the whole night. So I'm up on stage spinning or whatnot. So uh, Karis One manager came up to me and he was like, it was a, I forgot his name at the time, but he was like, yo, Karis One needs a DJ. You, you know, so play, what you're gonna do is you're gonna play the DAT, the DAT machine. And then when he tells you to play a beat, just play a beat for him. That's all you got to do. Okay, no problem. So I let the DAT machine play, and he does his thing. And then he's like, yo, can, you know, DJ, play a beat. He didn't know who I was, whatever. DJ, play a beat. I played a beat. And that beat moved him so much. 
He's told me to stop the speed. He said, whoa, 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 stop that. Stop the beat, stop the beat, stop the beat. He stopped. He had me stop the beat. He turned to the crowd, pointed behind him and said, and if I may curse, that's a motherfucking DJ right there. That was the beginning of Mark Love and Karis One's relationship. For him to say that is like a feather in my cap. I'll never forget that. I was raised by my grandmother. My grandmother didn't really like me going into the entertainment business, hip hop and all that stuff, because I was raised to be a Jehovah's Witness. And they look at that as being sacrilegious, blasphemous, uh, worldly, uh, leading down a path of destruction, hip hop, all this worldly stuff. But I basically also, unbeknownst to my grandmother and, and other, um, and my sisters, I hooked up with some cats in the neighborhood and I was like hanging around the gang set. So I was banging unbeknownst to my grandmother and everybody. I was doing my little bang thing on. And well, hip hop actually got me out of that shit because if I would have stayed in, I would have probably got killed. I would probably, you know, got went to jail. But my boy Mur my boy Murdoch basically was like, he basically kind of talked me out of it because he started getting into rapping too. But he was really head first into the whole thing, whole gang thing. So he was pretty much the one that told me to get the hell out. And I pretty much got the hell out. I started focusing on the music and the rest is history. There really isn't no real challenges because hip hop is supposed to be so open minded. No matter what you look like, you can be a part of hip hop and people will respect you for your talent. Um, one of the things that made me interested in hip hop a great deal was the fact that I was overweight and I was able to pop, rap, beatbox, whatever. And even though I'm overweight and everyone's like, oh, you're a fat guy, you're a fat kid or fat so or whatever. If I do some hip hop, they're like, oh, snap, you're dope. It just turns it completely around like we don't care about the weight now. Now we care about your skill. That's the one thing. That, and that's for everyone in hip hop. That's one thing that I have to commend hip hop for, for always doing that, being able to say, you know, take whatever handicap you have or whatever drawback you have and make a positive outcome of it, which is one of the reasons why I'm in Zulu Nation, because they focus on that. The fact that Karis One said that's a motherfucking DJ right there to me. And he's had Kenny Parker and Scott LaRock as his DJs. And for him to say that to me, and for me and him to develop a friendship with him and his family from that, for me to go around the world with Farside and see things I'd never seen before, um, for me to help, and yes, this is the real, for me to help a young man named Chang put together something called Rock the Bells, even though I never got no money for it, I still being able to say that I help him create it, it's still a feather in my cap. And there's, and he knows it. So with all that being said, I'll be honest with you, the collective embodiment of my entire career is my accomplishment. Knowing everyone from Be Real, you know, having a cousin that's 180, uh, 187 from above the law, you know, knowing Far Side, knowing, you know, being inspirational for DJ crews, for other DJs, knowing the beat junkies, knowing Qbert, knowing, I mean, it's like my, I'm living a fairy tale. You know, I don't have a platinum plaque on my wall. But for these brothers to come to me and say, you're just as important as a motherfucker that does, that's big for me. I have to go with Zulu Nation on this one. Each one teach one. Teaching everyone that hip hop is a culture and then using this culture to put out positive messages, messages of survival, messages of self-sufficiency, sovereignty, messages of entrepreneurship, messages of peace, love, unity, having fun, knowledge, wisdom, overstanding, freedom, justice, equality, work, respect, oneness of God, turning the negative into positive. This is something that I want to be remembered for as being uh, having a big part of that and having a big factor of that. If not on the world, just on the West Coast. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm never trying to change the world. I'm just trying to create options because a lot of people don't have those. So with that being said, I pretty much want to be remembered and have a legacy of like someone who gave a damn about the culture and gave a damn about the people doing the culture.